So it looks like we might have some new information on AMD's next gen GPU, Navi 31, and it looks like it's going to be a dual 80 compute unit chiplet design. Now I want to talk about why AMD wants to do this, and to do that I also need to talk about NVIDIA's next gen GPU, which is NVIDIA Lovelace, which I already have a video about, uh, so make sure you go and check that video out as well. I'll leave a link in the description below. But I want to talk about why NVIDIA wants to make a larger GPU and scale that down, and AMD wants to make a smaller one and scale it up. So let's jump straight into the news first, and we have an article here from Tech Power Up, and it's on Saturday, January the 23rd, and it says here, AMD is allegedly preparing Navi 31 GPU with dual 80 compute unit chiplet design. Now, there are a few other leakers on Twitter who are also saying the same thing. Now, it says here, according to the current rumors, AMD is working on an RDNA 3 GPU design based on chiplets. The chiplet design is supposed to feature two 80 compute unit dies, just like the ones found inside the Radeon RX 6900 XT graphics card. Now, it goes on to say, having two 80 compute unit dies would bring the total core number to exactly 10,240 cores, or two times 5,120 cores on the Navi 21 die, combined with the RDNA 3 architecture which brings better performance per watt compared to the last generation Arch. Navi 31 GPU is going to be a compute monster. So as you guys know, 6900 XT was on TSMC 7 nanometer, and if they were to put two 80 compute unit dies on the one GPU, I suspect they would have to go to TSMC 5 nanometer. Now, if you look at this chart from Wikichip, it's the TSMC device scaling or the transistor density. And for 7 nanometer, they have 91.2 million transistors per square millimeter, and for 5 nanometer, it has 171.3 million transistors per square millimeter, so effectively halving the area for those compute units. So effectively, we could be seeing AMD's Ryzen CPU design philosophy here. So with Ryzen, they had two CPU chiplets in the one die, and that idea expands further in their Threadripper series. So with Threadripper, they have four CPU chiplets on the one die, and of course, AMD's Epic uh, data center server CPUs, they also have more than four CPUs. Now, I want to segue into NVIDIA Lovelace for a second. So NVIDIA Lovelace is NVIDIA's next-gen GPU. Now, we already have some information about this, which I discussed at length in my 17-minute video about Lovelace, so make sure to check that video out. Um, I think the length was uh, a deterring factor for a lot of people, but it's got a lot of good information there, and I made it because uh, I knew that Lovelace wouldn't be out for a long time, so uh, I wanted more people to check that video out. Uh, so I put all of my Lovelace information in there. But essentially, uh, the short version is that a Cop i7 Kimi uh, gave out some information about Lovelace, and he said that GA102 has a 7x6 structure, which is uh, the existing Ampere uh, GPU, and now maybe AD102, which is the code name for Lovelace, will get a 12x6 structure. So with Lovelace, if they increase that to 12 GPCs, then you're looking at 18,432 CUDA cores, which effectively means that you're getting about 70% extra performance. So I guess what that means is that if Nvidia is going to be 70% faster next generation, and AMD has a GPU design that is effectively two times or two times the 80 compute units that they were using this generation, then AMD would be faster than NVIDIA next generation. So this is all theoretical performance, and we really can't say for sure if having two of these 80 compute unit dies is effectively going to double the performance of a single one. Uh, but what we can say, I guess, is if we look into the Ryzen CPUs uh, of what AMD has designed in the past, I think the chiplet design still has a lot of ground to make up for against the single monolithic design from Intel. So there was a bit of latency talk between the two chiplets, so we might see that happening again with GPUs. So in terms of theoretical performance, we can't really say that having just two of them is just going to double the performance. So these chiplet designs aren't the first time we've had multi-GPUs, and we've obviously had NVIDIA NVLink and SLI. We've had AMD Crossfire, but we've also had graphics card that had two GPUs on them. So we had the Radeon 295X2, so this was a uh, card with two uh, water pumps 
on them uh, going to one radiator fan and um, it was all on the same graphics card so we've had them in the past and now funnily enough uh, for this dual 80 compute unit die i wanted to check out what amd's philosophy was in the past for these multi gpus and why they decided to make cards like this so i actually had to go all the way back to 2008 and there was some information from anantech about why they decided to go with these uh, multi gpus so in this article from anantech which is the review for the ati radeon hd 4850 and the title is AMD delivers performance for the masses but uh, this HD 4850 also turned into a GPU where they had two GPUs on them which was called the HD 4850X2 now they had some slides from AMD explaining why they thought this was a good idea so AMD's strategy was a scalable design and it says here build the perfect gaming solution for 200 to 300 dollars play at any resolution and any image quality settings it has to be price right within gaming means it has the right power and thermals but the reason for AMD's design philosophy was that they wanted to build something that was in the middle of the range for everybody so uh, get that performance right for the masses and then for the enthusiast market which obviously there's a lot less people they wanted to uh, have that as a scalable design so uh, they wanted to make a smaller die and then upscale that uh, to those enthusiast markets now AMD says that their advantages are optimal solution for performance and ultra enthusiast gamers and a fast introduction of new technology so effectively what they're saying is they wanted to perfect making one small chip and then they don't have to make lots of different designs they can just have the same design and then scale that up and essentially they're saying that the traditional GPU strategy takes a lot longer so if their issues with it was that with a large monolithic chip they would have power and cost too high for most gamers and there'd be a 6 to 12 month time lag to bring latest technology to most gamers and potential of having to disable high cost chip to build lower price SKUs. Now in my opinion I think Nvidia wants to sell you a large monolithic die because it's easier for games to run on them and also easier for developers to develop on without having any uh, multi GPU syncing issues and also the fact that I think Nvidia just wants to stop selling two GPUs to everybody. They want to sell you one large GPU, uh, a 3090 for $1,500, rather than sell you two 3080s that will be way ahead of a 3090 for the same price. So there's a couple of issues here for AMD. Now, number one is the fact that with the large monolithic chip, they have a higher chance of getting a defect on them. With the smaller chip, there's a lot less chance of each chip getting a defect where then they would have to disable some units on it now nvidia likes to uh, make these large monolithic chips and then also if they have defects on them then they just disable some CUDA core units on them and then sell that anyway and uh, that's effectively what you get with say like the 3060 ti because the 3060 ti is just a cut down version of the 3070 so uh, AMD do this as well but it seems as though that they um, are looking to a chiplet design to address this type of issue now number two is the fact that even if you get these um, issues with your GPU then you still have to wait for a certain amount of them before you can go and supply the GPU markets so if a chip has say 70% success rate with 30% defects then you still have to wait a good amount of time before you collect enough of these GPUs before you can go to the market so that's why uh, you see the graph uh, the way it is here uh, you have to wait if you want to uh, sell the smaller die so there's one issue here that I don't agree with and I know it's a 12 year old slide but I want to talk about it anyway and it says here power and cost is too high for most gamers now power isn't really indicative of whether you have a small die or a large die and we've seen in the past we had multi GPUs like a 295x2 where it was power hungry anyway so it depends on a range of factors it, you know it depends on the design and the manufacturing process and uh, it's not always just about if it's a small die or a large die and also with the cost well I would say that the cost isn't um, really reflected in the end consumer price and we've seen both AMD and Nvidia charge whatever the market price was going to be for these GPUs and so 
if this reduces the cost for AMD, uh, that's great. But ultimately, the GPU cost itself, um, especially for these large monolithic chips, it might be, say, like $200, and then they sell you that card for like $1,500. Well, um, even if they reduce the price by like 20% to say like $160, so they make a saving of $40, then that $40 saving isn't really going to help anyone if you're buying a $1,500 card. So um, these smaller chiplets, I think they will help in terms of getting the product out to market faster because you'll be able to make more of them. But in terms of other factors, power, cost, price, uh, it may not uh, have as much of an impact. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think this uh, chiplet design could work or do you think it will turn out like AMD Crossfire or NVIDIA SLI? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, make sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.